The meeting with Karis really threw me off. All of that just to tell me he wanted me to stay with Kesa. And I'd already decided to do that. I had run away from the training room afterward. Not because he upset me. I just needed some time to think about everything. It wasn't as if I liked him now, or agreed with his choices. Pushing Kesa away to that extent for his protection was cruel. There were other ways to protect him. He could even have sent Kesa to Endgame. Kesa would have had a much better life there. Well, I don't know about that one. In some ways, yes. But Karis had kept him here in Delphine. This place was not a cage, as much as they all acted like it was. But I suppose that was part of the tragedy. The way Delphine somehow convinced everyone they couldn't escape or change things. Good point. If the people in charge tried, they could make a difference. Though I suppose it was never that easy. One person had so much power sometimes, and so little power at others. There were never simple solutions. Karis was more complicated than I had expected, and I could sympathize with what seemed like the genuine pain he felt over his limitations and failings as a father. What I wasn't sure about was whether it would be better to tell Kesa about it or not. Uh, I know, I was thinking about it, girl. Please, continue. To explain everything that was in my, my brain last time. <laughs> would it even change anything? But I did believe Kesa wanted to have a relationship with his father. But I wasn't sure telling him about this would give him that. <sighs> Hi, Jack. You okay, Butterfly? Huh? Oh, I'm fine. You've been here a while already. Kesa just arrived. He'll want to see you. I figured I'd let you know. He could have sent me a message himself. I reckon he's trying to surprise you. But I figured you might want a little warning. Did you know what Karis wanted to talk to me about? Just that it was about Kesa. He doesn't give me details. It doesn't seem like it went badly, but... Oh? Could you tell because I'm still alive? Oh. I didn't think there were any concern about him killing you. Still, seems like your little talk upset you. I'm not upset. There's just a lot to think about. I stood and twisted my neck, eliciting a satisfying pop. Nice. I'll head back to my room. I still haven't cleaned up after training. Did Karis tell you not to talk about your conversation? No, he didn't. That's a good point. Okay. Good to know. Carrie and June weren't far, of course. They fell into step behind me on my way back to my room. None of us spoke, and I remained lost in thought the entire time. I was fortunate that I managed to shower and get myself partially dressed before Kesa burst into my room without warning. Hello! I missed you. Kesa. This time he paid no attention to how I was dressed and just kicked the door shut before striding to me. Striding, hello. I heard you met with my father. Did he... are you alright? I'm fine. Aw, he was so worried, my heart. He caught me up into a tight embrace. Are you sure? What did he want with you? Jack wouldn't tell me anything. I didn't tell Jack much about what we discussed. He pulled back, gripping my shoulders tightly as he stared down at me. Did father threaten you? No. Then what? Why could he possibly want to speak with you? Well, we talked about you. His expression was suddenly uncertain, like he'd stepped into unfamiliar territory. He's like, out of all the possibilities of why his dad wanted to talk to Morgan, this was not one of the possibilities. Me. Father went out of his way to meet with you so he could speak to you about me? I think he's just concerned about you. He wanted to tell me to protect you. And he asked if I love you. Ooh. Kesa drew in a sharp breath and looked like he'd just been slapped. 
After a long pause, he let out a strangled exhale. He... asked you a question like that? He did. And? What... What did you tell him? What do you think I told him? I... His hand found my hand, and he slid his fingers between mine, wrapping them carefully over my knuckles. Oh, <laughs> I was like, Morgan, how can you be so cruel to this boy? He's like, D did you did you tell my dad that y y you liked me maybe a little bit? And she's like, well, what did you think I'd... <laughs> Morgan, please. This poor boy. Is it too much to hope you said you do? His voice was so soft, a fragile murmur that spoke of a surprising lack of confidence. I reached up to move a long lock of his hair from his face. Of course it's not too much. I told him that, against my better judgment, I... You did not tell him that. I wanted to. Should I be relieved you have poor judgment? Is that it, then? Well, if I had better taste and... He cut me off with a kiss, pulling me closer to him and relinquishing my hand to slide his arms around my waist. Ow. Oh, he said it first! <laughs> I mean, to her. She already admitted she loved him, but not, not to him yet. Ah, oh, yay. It's happening. I love you. He whispered the word softly against my lips. It began that day I took you to the court. Perhaps it started before then. Interesting. That's when he really, like, thought about it, was when he took her to the court. I knew it. And every day since has only made me love you more. Morgan, you... You're everything I've ever wanted. He kissed me again and again, his lips hungrily covering mine as he murmured the words, I love you. Case's kisses always lean more towards heated than gentle, but these were more intense than any other so far. Okay, I don't... If Jack interrupts this... This perfect moment, I will be so, so sad. But, I'm going to manifest into the world that this is probably going to lead to the fun time scene with Kesa. I'm manifesting it. So, be forewarned and forearmed. Otherwise, you're going to hear me rant at Jack again. One of those two things is about to happen, I think. His hands were splayed out on either side of my body, keeping me pulled against him. I clung to him, letting the melting quality of each kiss just seep into me. My hands threaded through his silky hair as coherent thoughts started to fade. He was so... This was so frightening, in a way, but I wanted it so badly. Case's hand slid down to my hips, then up my back, glancing across my shoulder blades. The heat of them blazed through my thin camisole. And somehow that single touch awakened a feeling of deep longing in the pit of my stomach. I missed him so much. I was glad he was back. I pulled him even closer, kissing him with a hunger that surprised me. Without realizing, one of my legs curved around his, and Case's hand found its way to the underside of my thigh, holding it there. Damn! A soft groan of pleasure rumbled from his chest to mine, but he quickly released me, only to pull me closer to the bed. This time, his hand slid under the edge of my camisole, burning flesh against flesh as they traveled around my waist, thumbs grazing my navel before catching the hem and lifting it over my head. And then she disappeared. <laughs> It was so much, she just poofed out of existence. I gasped as cool air hit my skin, followed by Case's hands. His lips trailed over my shoulders, collarbone, the tops of my breasts. His touch oscillated between gentle and rough as he explored every valley and curve, caressing, kneading soft flesh. I let out a soft gasp as his tongue flickered across my skin, leaving a trail of wetness that raised goosebumps. Morgan. He murmured my name against the sensitive flesh of my throat. My world tilted, and I was falling back on the bed. And the shirt is off. 
Kesa leaned over me, a blur of pale skin and rustle of black cloth as he yanked his own shirt over his head. He lowered himself to me, and there was only the heat of his lips, the soft warmth of his skin against mine, the tangle of our legs as we tried to press as close together as possible. I dragged my fingers across his back where every muscle rippled beneath them as he moved. I had wanted to touch him for so long, and now he was here. My mind had gone blank, filled only with his touch, his dark, captivating taste. Somehow my lips found their way to Case's ear, his neck, and chest. His fingers glided through my hair, gripping my head as he pressed in closer and let out a soft, pleading groan that didn't sound at all like him. I pulled away, and our eyes met. He pushed me back onto the mattress, but held himself above me with his elbows digging into the bedding. There it is. Hey. On the crimson sheets, no less. For a long moment, it seemed as if time had stopped. In the dim lighting, he was so beautiful. His face was flushed, eyes half-closed, brows pulled together in a look that was at once intense and yearning. Like he had smothered this desire for too long and now was unsure if it was all right to claim it. Each breath came in battered gasps, the only sound in the room. I reached up and touched his cheek again, breaking the tension. Kesa kissed the center of my hand, never looking away as he scraped his teeth lightly over the soft flesh at the base of my thumb. I bit the edge of my lips, amazed that such a simple gesture could send waves of heat spiraling through me like that. I love you. Yay, she finally said it back! <laughs> I'm like, are you going to say it back? He just said he loved you! Hooray! A smile unfolded over his features filling his, uh, his face with such heartbreaking tenderness that tears stung my eyes. I loved this man so much. How did I not realize how much I loved him? When he kissed me again, it was slow, with unhurried and sensual ease. His arms circled behind, lifting me off the mattress to press against his bare chest. He cradled me against him as if holding something precious. Aww. I gasped against his mouth as he pressed his hips in closer, electrifying every nerve in my body at once. He rocked against me once, then again. I let out a soft, kneading cry at the feel of him so tight against me, trying to rub myself against him to ease the growing ache inside me. I want you. Y yes Yes. Our lips met again, then Kesa lowered his head again, his mouth resting for a space just below the hollow of my throat. One hand slid below my waist, catching on my waistband as his head traveled lower, tongue trailing down my breastbone. Sparks blazed through my vision and I squeezed my eyes shut, letting out a shuddering whimper as he made a valiant effort to taste, to claim, every inch of skin from my breast to my navel, then lower as he removed more of my clothes. Yay, hand-holding again, let's go. <laughs> Although... Oh, I see it now. I was like, where is her hand coming from? Because I just saw this part. I can now finally see the rest of it. I'm like, where is the rest of her arm? <laughs> all right, all right. I see it now. He was... He was everything I expected. And he was so much more. Little things he did surprised me. Little ways he tried to find out what I liked or the way he watched me to gauge every reaction. And that way he had of pushing me so close to the edge I thought I'd break, only to pull back and draw it out even longer. Every time I tried to touch him, he'd catch my hands and lock his fingers into mine, pressing them against the mattress. The look on his face in those moments was so intensely yearning it was like staring into the sun. It wasn't until he was finally curled over me with his face buried against me, still gasping for air, that I had enough clarity of thought to realize just how much he must have been holding back to make it all last. <laughs> this guy. I had, at some point, worried I might regret it all when the moment had passed. But that sort of feeling never came, even after we had laid there with our legs tangled for a long time. I smiled against his chest, listening to the sound of his heart and the slow rise and fall of each breath. Mum would probably be horrified by my choices here. All of them. I think your mom's going to be the biggest fan. <laughs> I'm calling it now. But I felt 
incredibly satisfied with Case's hand twisting idle loops in my hair, his body next to mine. What are you thinking about? Hmm. He shifted, looking down at me through half-closed eyes. To be honest, I'm somewhat mortified to learn my bed is more comfortable than yours. I propped myself up on my elbows and gave him a disgusted look. He met it with a smug grin. What were you thinking? That... That was amazing. That you're amazing. That I had no idea I'd somehow end up here, but now that I am, I wouldn't change it, even if given a chance. That I'm so in love with your stupid face I can barely stand it. And here you are worried about how comfortable my bed is? He laughed and reached up to tuck my hair behind my ear. <laughs> You're late if you're just now thinking all those things. I've been thinking them for a while now. I kissed his annoying smile and settled back against him, not really annoyed at all. Well, me too. He blew a soft sigh through his lips, causing me to look up at him again. <sighs> what is it? Well, he waited. He waited. He at least waited. Oh, could have been worse timing. But still, I just... I'm... I actually have tears in my eyes because I'm so sad that Jack has done this again. But it's... It's it's okay. I'm not angry. I'm just like... One scene. What? Can I have one scene with Kesa where Jack is not involved for like five seconds? I am losing my mind! <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually tearing up! Uh, just as, I just need I just need to recenter myself. Uh, <clears throat> it's fine. Jack gets a free pass this time. Right? Right. <sighs> no wonder he sighed. A message from Jack. You have to go? I should. Though, I would... like to come back. Really? I thought my bed was uncomfortable. Kesa sat up, stretching and giving me a wonderful full view of the tattoo on his back. I couldn't stop myself from reaching out and touching it this time, like I'd wanted to before. He gave me a teasing smile over his shoulder as I traced the delicate feathers. You're right. Your bed is uncomfortable. Thus, you should relocate to my room instead. You can be so spoiled when you want to be. He leaned down to kiss me. Otherwise, I will be back. Uncomfortable, bed or not. I look forward to it. I watched him dress, something that was a very gratifying pastime. Then I watched him leave before falling back into the bed, happy. Very, very happy. Yay. All right, chapter 11. All the stars in the sky. Will never be enough. I think your idea about the rooftop garden for the court is good, as long as there are people willing to oversee it. It's going to need daily work to get it up and running. We can find information on exactly how to get it set up and how to run it so we can teach them. But even if we're able to synthesize starter crops for them, it will be some time before it will be able to provide anything for the tenants. I understand that. It may help if I offer a small salary to the caretakers. Looking at these images, there's a lot of suitable space available for a nice setup. I'm looking forward to it. If we're considering something more complicated, getting some equipment will be tricky without attracting attention. Something like this would usually require several permits we won't be acquiring. There are some unregulated markets where we can purchase most of what we need, though. Ah. Buying gardening equipment off the underground market. Just what I always wanted to be doing. Uh, green thumb, garden, and do crime. <laughs> what an amazing achievement. The grey water system you proposed is also unlikely to be legal. 
Yes, yes. I've become a criminal like the rest of you. I know. As I was saying, one scene. One. We may be criminals, but at least we're cute ones. Well, one of you is. <laughs> In this route, anyway. No, you're not. Have you seen some of the people in this group? Come on, Butterfly. You think at least one of us is cute. I gave him an annoyed look. How did he hear me through the screen? Besides, you're one of us now, and you're quite lovely yourself. Jack, I'm curious about something. Sure, what's that? If I were to shove you out of this moving vehicle, what are the chances of you landing on your feet? I vote for testing this out. Jack clicked his tongue, waving a finger at Kesa. No, no, not in front of Morgan. We can't advance from illicit gardening equipment to murder in a single move. I rolled my eyes at the both of them and turned my attention back to the display in my hand. Ever since Kesa and I had made it known to his inner circle that we were together, Jack had made it a point to constantly tease me about accepting my new life as part of a criminal group. It was annoying. A slight smile came to my lips anyway. He was an idiot. And sometimes so was Kesa. And they really are cute. Anyway, once we have a look at their water system, we'll know what sort of arrangement will work best. It would be great if we could set up an organic filtration system. But that would require piping the water into an artificial wetland to be cleaned and then rerouted for use in the garden. The plumbing for that kind of system would be the most troublesome part. Even though reusing the building's gray water was the best option to keep water consumption down... I didn't expect your report to be this interesting. That's almost offensive, I'll have you know. He smiled as he pulled up a display of his own. Still, I'm glad you found it inspiring. Downsizing some of the initial suggestions to a rooftop garden for the court is a wonderful idea. It would be great if we can expand it to more buildings going forward. Every time I visit New Albion, I'm surprised by the amount of plant life. It will be more difficult to get plants thriving here, but I think if we choose the right ones, we can manage. Mostly we'll be looking at native flora, which is sometimes overlooked by city planners. Setting aside things that provide food, utilizing a bioregenerative system will mean less power reserves going to life support. A BLSS utilizes an artificial ecosystem created from a multitude of life forms, all functioning in harmony to provide a natural habitation environment entirely closed off from exterior interactions. In the most efficient versions of the, these systems, all waste products produced by one species must be used by at least one other species to maintain this balance. However, the systems within the domes always require some outside waste management, so the ecospheres are not entirely self-contained. This is particularly true on the night side of the planet. The use of BLSS helped maintain a functioning life support setup for citizens while reducing the energy requirements of maintaining an entirely artificial system. However, most of the night side domes were never set up properly to begin with and utilized far less plant life and ecosystem management than the day side, compounding the existing problems they have with high energy consumption. Many domes cannot afford the infrastructure and labor costs required to get a proper BLSS set up and going strong, so they continue to maintain artificial life support for most of their needs. Okay. It's how some domes in the day territories have such low energy consumption. With energy at a premium here, it's absolute madness the government isn't putting money towards making something like this work. I agree. But it wasn't really something I'd given thought to either. If we can get the supplies needed, it would be a good start to general improvements in Chestershire. Sometimes there are so many problems that the simple solutions become difficult to spot. And you have other solutions here that we can work with too. I'm glad. Believe me, this is not my area of expertise. Perhaps not. But you think like a scientist, and that's a valuable quality to have here. Well, if any of my ideas can help, then I'm glad for it. He took my hand, lacing our fingers together with a soft smile. They will help, of course. Okay, okay. 
creeps me out when I see you acting all cute, Kesa. Knock it off. Oh, you are still here. My thoughts exactly. Where the hell would I go, Kesa? We're in a damn car! <laughs> I laughed as the two of them started the usual bickering again. The court was the same as always. Kesa was mobbed as soon as we arrived. People stared at me this time, mostly because Kesa wouldn't let go of my hand. Aw. And we had to answer a disturbing amount of questions about our relationship before someone finally managed to lure him away from me. Which left me to fend for myself. Not that I minded too much. Most people were friendly. Ish. Oh gosh, Valley, it's been so long. <laughs> what, you jealous or something? What, what's, what's with the third degree from you all the time? You, you got Rowan. What do you want? I should have seen this coming. You would be his type. You're trying to make it sound like an insult, but somehow I'm not insulted. At the very least, I'm glad to hear you're actually making progress with your sigh. I was worried you were going to be a permanently useless fixture. Pretty, but unable to provide any practical value. Like a pretty lamp with a few missing fuses. Thank you, I get, I get the point. I'd be careful with the insults, though. She might actually be stronger than you are. Oh, you're here. <laughs> We're all just turning against Jack one by one. Kesa, Veli, me. We're just like, oh, Jack, you're still here. Mm. Yes, I'm here. What is with you and Kesa today? I don't know. Maybe you've been overstaying your welcome everywhere, Jack. Poor Jack. It wasn't his fault he was fun to pick on. <laughs> Though it was his fault. He usually deserved it. Veli has much more experience than I do, Jack. Sometimes raw strength isn't enough, so please don't compare us. Oh, you do say smart things sometimes, don't you? Morgan, don't waste your breath being nice to this jerk. You are being quite cheeky today, Jack. Celeste is out at the moment. It would be a shame if my hand slipped and I stabbed you when there is no one here to heal you. Again. Again? If you haven't noticed, Jack is annoying. I have noticed, actually. But that's no reason to stab him. He was particularly irritating that day. I believe it at this point. <laughs> Veli has a valid point. Considering Veli also seemed to find me irritating during most of our interactions, that was a little concerning. Good point. Veli, if you ever stab me, I'm going to fold you in half and shove you in a closet somewhere. Don't worry. If I stab you, Morgan, I'll make sure it's somewhere you won't get back up. He smiled slightly. But as long as Kesa likes you, I won't be stabbing you. He leaned in closer. Just don't hurt him. Ever. <laughs> I'm really tired of this kind of thing. Look. I'm not confident or stubborn, but I'm confident in this situation, okay? You don't have to tell me that. I don't intend to. Good. He started to sweep past me, as he did, but he paused to give me a look through narrowed eyes. That means taking care of yourself as well, Morgan. Good point. Because you would be hurting Kesa if you got hurt. All right, all right, Belly, I see you. Kesa has been through enough. And he's lost enough. Don't make him lose another person he cares about. You don't have to tell me that either. Then... Perhaps it's late, but... Welcome to the court. I went stiff as a board when he enfolded me in a quick hug. Who are you? What? Well what? Veli, what the heck? <laughs> you can't just do that out of nowhere. He left me standing there wide-eyed and kind of afraid as he rejoined Rowan, who was standing close by. I think my life flashed before my eyes. I don't blame you. I barely had time to get my head around that when Kesa found his way back to me. Morgan, let's have a look at the roof. 
I've also suggested a few others come with us, since they have skills that might be useful for getting things set up. Alright, let's go. Everyone is looking forward to seeing what we come up with. It seems like there's a lot of interest in this project. I'm glad to hear it. He set his hand at the small of my back and guided me up the stairs. <laughs>